Okay, and so now we're on module eight. Module eight is the final module in unit two. Um, so again, you did not, there was no lecture video for module seven. It's mostly, it was mostly about math terms that I know you already know, like mode, mean, median. So I think it's pretty self-explanatory, um, but obviously ask questions if you have them. So module eight, um, it does focus a little bit on just kind of frequently asked questions in psychology about how um, culture and different ideas influence the things that we study. But it also goes into something that's really important, which are the ethical guidelines that one must follow when doing psychological research, whether it is an experiment, a survey, an observation, whatever it happens to be. So um, as you're in your assignment here, make sure you have it open. All you're doing for the guided notes is writing down the ethical guidelines. And then there's actually a separate part in the check for understanding, which I'll go over in a second, but moving on. So um, the first ethical guideline, and these are things that all researchers must follow and they're implemented or, um, and then also checked over by usually the research institution that you work for. So whether that is a university, whether it is a medical center, um, or whether it is that you work in like a lab and you follow like the American Psychological Association guidelines. So the first is that the research must be voluntary and based on informed consent. So you need to volunteer to be in this study. If you are going to do an experiment, they can't force you to be in the experiment. And addi additionally, you also have to give your consent. So there needs to be something, typically it's going to be a legal document that says, yes, I am doing this. I am volunteering myself to be in this study. I give consent. If it's a survey or it's an interview, that's just you saying like, yep, I agree that this can be used. Um, so anytime you are taking place in something, you need to ask for somebody's consent. If consent is not given and somebody uses that data or they use your name, you have the right to say that this was not obtained legally. Next, um, two, participants should not be exposed to harmful or dangerous procedures. This one really is mostly for um, experiments, but if you're in an experiment, you should not be physically harmed or emotionally. Um, there should not be any sort of trauma give that is performed to you. Um, and if there are going to be potentially dangerous procedures, meaning there is the potential that something could harm you, they have to be outlined. And again, if you're like, yeah, bring it on, then if you consent to it, then they can't, they can't be held accountable for that. So again, they have to be explained to you and you have to give your consent. Three, um, researchers must explain if they purposely deceived subjects as soon as possible after the, the study has been done. So for some reason you're in an experiment or survey or whatever, and the experimenter is leading you astray and they are you know, doing it, they told you something, but actually what the purpose of it was totally different. They need to tell you that after the survey is, they need to de debrief you and say, we were actually doing this, and then this is the reason why we wanted to show this information, or we tricked you for this reason. Um, number four, subjects' right to privacy must never be violated. You have to give consent again, and if you say you can use my data, but you don't, you can't use my name in this, they cannot do that. They cannot violate your privacy, your personal data, just for the sake of the research. So again, you have to give consent to everything and what they use. Um, and they cannot just go out and saying like, Rachel Sanderson was in this study and she did all these crazy things and now she's messed up. Um, they can't do that if I don't give them that consent um, and they cannot violate that privacy. If they do, again, you have reason to uh, act against them. Five, almost there. Um, any harm to animals must be justified, meaning the info gained from the study must outweigh the harm that is going to be caused. In psychology, because a lot of times things are done with animals such as rats, or as you'll learn throughout this year, there we see surveys with, or surveys, experiments with monkeys, things like that. Um, it's because these animals are Obviously they have a brain and they have a lot of functioning similar to humans, but they aren't humans. The ethics of this, obviously a lot of people might say there should be no experimentation on animals, um, but 
it is used. And if you are going to do it, there, there must not be any harm. And if there is the potential for harm, it must be justified. Meaning there must be some kind of gain that you're going to get from this that's going to outweigh the cons. Um, I know last year we actually had a large discussion about this in class and a lot of people were like, no, never, never do it. But then somebody's like, well, what if you're ex testing drugs though that could cure a type of cancer? Like, are does that outweigh the harm? And a lot of people would say, yeah, if it's going to save millions of humans, then what? why not kill a few rats? So obviously we all lie on a different uh, ideological spectrum there, but that is number five. And finally, number six, um, prior to testing, the experiment must be approved. You can't just make up an experiment, create a drug, and then <laughs> start testing it. You have to go through tons of like you have to get it approved by whether you're doing it in your again like for a college if you work at their labs you have to have it approved by the college you have to have it approved by a board there's so many things that you have to do before you actually go about and do these experiments um so that being said those are kind of the main um guidelines that psychologists have to follow obviously these are broken and as you'll learn about in some of these studies we look at this year, sometimes you're gonna be like, I don't know if, if they actually did follow this. But one study that's really um, famous and that you're going to watch a video about, I was going to make you read about it, but I'm saving you. Um, so when you go to your assignment after you wrote down those notes, it says for the check for understanding, there is a video that you need to watch. Um, it's like 12 minutes long, but it's actually really interesting, I swear. Um, it's about something called the Stanford Prison Experiment. So basically what happened at Stanford University in the 1960s, I believe, maybe, maybe it was the 70s, but years ago, um, there's this experiment and it was, Stanford is a huge psychological um, testing place. They have a really great psychology department there, uh, but they wanted to do this, this study, basically seeing if, um, how people used power when given that opportunity to. So they found just random people, had them, told them what was gonna be going on. They said, you are either going to be a prisoner or you're going to be a warden, like a, a guard in a prison. And they made a prison in the basement at Stanford University and they made it look really real. And what happens is the people really, they really, really play their roles very realistically. And it becomes a super unethical um, experiment. So you're going to watch the video about this. Again, it's fascinating. I think there's actually a movie that was made about it. Maybe it's on Netflix. I don't know. Um, but you're going to watch the video about it. And then there's two reflection questions. Then you are done with module eight. And that's actually it for unit two. And then we'll move on to unit three. And that's it.